Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to review Venom number four by Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. And uh, actually it's, you know, 2.45 in the morning right now. And so I just bought the book on Kindle. I was like, you know what? I don't want to wait till the comic store tomorrow. And plus I'm going to be working throughout the whole day tomorrow. And I'm not going to be, you know, able to go to the comic store. By the time I get home, I got to prepare for a podcast that I'm going to be on. So uh, I'll let you know more about that once it happens tomorrow. Uh, but I'm very excited to go back back on this show that had me on before and we're going to talk Venom and other comic book things I'm sure uh, but uh, so I won't have time to go to the comic book store and so I was like well I want to get this review up I want to get it recorded up, you know as soon as possible so I figured since this video is going to take forever to export because it's an hour long I might as well just sit down and read this comic and just give you my initial reaction to Venom number four and I will say right off the bat there's going to be spoilers I'm going to talk about pretty much everything I can in this book uh, because it is all exposition from page one till the end there's like one little blip of action at the end but it is pretty much all just the bad guy Null or whatever his name is the the god symbiote guy just telling his entire story to Eddie Brock uh, for what reason I don't know if he's trying to make him understand you know what he's going through I don't know or maybe because he's been locked up so long he wants to tell someone something uh, but uh, yeah we're gonna get into all of it in this episode so if you haven't read it yet Go read it first and then come back here and uh, join the conversation in the comments below of what you thought of the book. All right, with that all out of the way, let's dive into this book. So I have the Kindle right here because I read it twice now and I'm just kind of processing it. I read it once when I first, you know, before I recorded my first hour long video. And then as it was starting to export, I read it a second time and then I filmed another video. And then now I'm going through it again, uh, you know, before I recorded this one. And I gotta say, man, like, I'm I don't know how I feel about it to be honest with you a part of me really doesn't like it there's a really strong part of me that doesn't like it and the, the thing is I'm trying to temper that because I don't want to always be like oh it's not this and I don't like change because it's it's that's not true I like when things change I know stories have to evolve and they have to add things to mythos and everything to keep the interest there or you know or that's what they think they need to do to keep the interest there but the the more I think about this the best way I can describe it and sum it up is that this feels like Rob Zombie's Halloween movies or like uh, Ridley Scott's newer alien movies it just feels like oh we're gonna take this thing that really didn't need an explanation and we're gonna go back and tell you how it came to be and so like the whole book in this one is Null the symbiote god talking to Eddie Brock and telling him where the symbiotes come from and how he was the first one to ever create a symbiote uh, the Clintar as they've come to be known now and he says like these aren't creatures that were just out in space I made them and all I could think about was like the engineer and the people from Prometheus and all that stuff uh, but not like in a good way because I still kind of like Prometheus a little bit but I don't like them being like an uh, like a catalyst for the creation of the xenomorphs and then I heard in the last movie like I guess David the cyborg made the you know finished the job and I'm just like I don't care what's what was creepy was that somewhere out in space there was a weird alien uh, what was creepy about Michael Myers is that somewhere in America there was just like this crazy dude um, and I, it doesn't matter that his parents beat him when he was a kid it doesn't matter how he became the dude it just mattered that he was the dude and he was you know he struck fear in you um, sometimes the unknown is what makes things scary and I know that it's not the case for everyone and nowadays we live in a world where everything has to be known uh, because we like to understand things or dissect things and everything but sometimes you need that mystery and I always assumed the Clintar race was just this alien race of symbiotes out on this planet and this book completely you know retcons all of that and not even really retcons they never fully established any of the background of the Clintars except for the one storyline where uh, Carnage bonded with Silver Surfer and the reason he did that is because Galactus once ate a planet that the Clintars had started to take over and Galactus apparently ingested like a thousand you know Clintar alien symbiotes um, and uh, you know I don't know what that did to his digestive system but apparently he was okay after that um, so yeah so in this one it starts off and it has Null telling you know talk about being in the darkness and he was born in the darkness there was no light he was just this creature floating in the darkness um, 
and then boom, light. And then as out of that light came the Celestials and these big giant gods that are currently in the Avenger book. And you can, and you can see that Donny Cates is really trying to tie this into things that happened in Thor. Thor even shows up in this issue. The Celestials, like all the stuff that's going on in the Avengers book currently, uh, he's trying to tie this into the, the current web, this fresh start of stuff that Marvel's doing with Avengers and other titles. And on one level, I'm like, well, that's neat because we haven't seen Venom be that involved in something that that matters to the Marvel Universe. Um, we haven't seen that. And he could possibly be, you know, the Venom suit itself could possibly be the one weapon that can be used to strike down this evil that is on the verge of coming back. So there's there's a neat element there, I feel, but at the cost of pretty much saying everything we knew was a lie. And there's literally a line in this where Noel says, uh, oh, the Clintars, like what they are, and that you just think that they're this alien race of suits that hang out on this planet called Clintar, and that's all they are. He's like, no, they lied to you. They lied to everyone because they're trying to, you know, keep a secret, something hidden on their planet. And I'm like, yeah, but weren't they recently, like, granted, I'm not a big fan of the Colin Bunn stuff, with the recent Venomverse and all that stuff, but didn't they do like Poison X or whatever that crossover was with the X Men? And didn't someone kidnap all the Clintars from? you know clintar like they took all the suits off clintar and used it you know and brought them to earth wouldn't they have noticed going around the whole planet and scooping all of them up wouldn't the poisons have noticed something under the surface that they were hiding if there was nothing there to prevent you know what i'm saying so it's like <laughs> it's not that it matters like i'm we're reading too much into it like a fanboy does but uh but still on some level it was like I feel like something would have brought this up before, um, but of course, you know, it was all a lie. And so that's kind of the thing they go with in this, is that everything we've ever been told about the Clintar and the alien race of symbiotes is a pure lie. So what Null did when the Celestials showed up and brought light into the universe, he like pounded into the darkness and he found um, essentially the beginnings of early symbiote. It's like this, like, you know, you can see it kind of coming out there and he's pulling it out and he makes a weapon out of it. He makes a sword out of it and he cuts the head off a celestial. And, uh, and what he does is inside the celestial, now that it's a decapitated head, there's a fire still burning inside of it. And Noel was exiled for killing a god. So the other god's like, no, you're done. You're going to sit out here and drift in space with this celestial. And I'm like, well, if he cut off one god's head with a symbiote sword that he made out of thin air instantly, why why didn't he just cut off the heads of the other ones? Um, but I guess they had enough power to banish him or something. So he's floating in this head and he's using the fire inside to forge the symbiote into creation. And he makes a weapon that he calls like the God Slayer or something, which is pretty generic in my opinion, something we see all the time. He calls it the Necro Sword and the Gods. It has like a lot of names basically. Um, but he was also said it was the first thing he ever created uh, and it was called the All Black, and that was the name of his symbiote. Uh, he didn't realize it could become a life form like the way it evolves into later on with, you know, Eddie and, you know, symbiotes and Carnage and stuff like that. Uh, he just created a weapon out of it, a sword out of it, and then he fought into a battle and then ended up crashing on Earth. And then meanwhile, he cuts back to present day, and Eddie's like, you know, tell me more. I want to know more. I want to know the truth. Like, if all, this has all been a lie, I want to know the truth. So then it cuts back to Clintar, and you see, um, you know, or I think it's Clintar, and then they, like there's parts that take place on Earth, and you have Null essentially like building up Clintar or the planet that is Clintar and making it his throne. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna create more symbiotes, and they're gonna worship everything I do, and they're gonna follow everything I do. And so that's what they do. They have the red spirals, and they follow every order that he gives. But meanwhile, he does come back to Earth. He crash lands on her uh, on, on Earth, and you see actually the Beowulf scene read done in this sequence and what happens is Beowulf doesn't show up to save those men but Thor does and Thor hits Null with enough like more power than he's ever felt before against him which is crazy because I'm like didn't he fight a celestial and can kill it with ease uh, but Thor came with his hammer and it immediately struck him down so he got trapped and what happened is the symbiotes kind of uh, were no longer fully under his control and they wanted to hide something so they they started to rebel against him and he had the big red spider on him and you know they're kind of rebelling against him um, and they decide to trap him in the dark so somewhere on Clintar he is buried his true form is buried on Clintar and this dragon form uh, and this form that we see here that is known as the Grendel so it ties into Beowulf like lore and stuff uh, so he was the Grendel monster that that we you know 
humans deemed as the Grendel, um, so that's why he looks the way he does. This form was on Earth, and uh, and so basically the two forms have to come together, or one form has to break the other form on Clintar out. So his plan is to get back to Clintar, and meanwhile he's talking to Eddie. You don't know where they are, and you know as far as time and space goes, and then also. Um, Miles Morales is starting to come too. So it looks like he's going to be on board for the rest of this story for the most part. Uh, but then Null says, like, everything you know is a lie. You know, the, the Clintars are not just a planet of symbiotes. It's a cage. And there's something hidden in that cage. And it's pretty much my true form. And so we need to go awaken it. Like, I'm not, I don't want to be this Grendel creature anymore. I don't want to be divided from myself. I'm less powerful this way. Um, but now that I've risen in this form, the, any symbiotes around me are going to start remembering how they used to be and they're going to start falling under my control again which is why your symbiote has been freaking out for the past couple weeks and so as eddie's getting all this information dumped all over him and he's like you know struggling to process it all and he looks like he's hurting uh, then miles morales comes in and saves him he like regains consciousness runs over and hits you know hits uh null with a blast right to the face that just like obliterates him and actually blows his face right off but he's still alive he's like this creature and i know these are bad visuals i'm doing that intentionally because i don't want to show nice scanned artwork and give away this comic too much i want you guys to go check it out because obviously ryan stegman draws the living hell out of it and it's awesome uh but for the story you know it's still it's like he get you know the first issue was like oh i like where this is going second issue i'm like oh, i'm not feeling it third issue i'm like oh i'm liking where this is going fourth issue i'm like oh now you're just full-on retconning just like a ton of stuff and and not even really retconning just like um because it's it wasn't fully established clearly about the symbiote race and alien race and like i said i understand going back and that need to wanting to add something to the mythos but I keep thinking back on the Rob Zombie Halloween and the current Ridley Scott alien stuff. I'm just like, you don't need that information truly um, because something, I mean, you, you already buy into the fact that it's just an alien race and their pure existence based off Planet of the Symbiotes is that they're just like the symbiote race and they find other cultures and they latch onto them and then they drain them and they move on and that's just their parasites. That That's just the life they live. Um, so I understand wanting to add more to that on some level, but to actually do it, it just, the execution comes across very much like that and to not even do it that visually interesting like to me this just seems like like Donnie Cates was really great on Thanos because it, he has these big ideas of like all right you know uh, Frank Castle's gonna be the cosmic punisher and the Hulk is gonna be chained up like a dog and you know and and Thanos is gonna meet past Thanos and they're gonna team up to kill Silver Surfer who has the infinity gauntlet and it's just like this this big fanboy kind of thing that just kind of worked in Thanos. And then in uh, Damnation, it was like, all right, I'm going to come up with this ridiculous idea where Las Vegas gets taken over by hell and, you know, and Doctor Strange and these new Midnight Suns have to team up to fight against it. And it's like, all right, that kind of works too on some level. But this Venom thing is, is it's like, I don't know. This is my initial reaction. So, you know, just take it for what it wor it's what it's worth. But uh, to me, I'm just like, there's there's a disconnect. There's there's a mixture of this, oh, I have a cool concept, and then here's all these fanboy type things that I did on Thanos that worked over there, and I'm try I'm gonna make this epic. I'm gonna make this god who was born in the darkness, and then he like slices the head off a of celestial, and you're just like, what? Like, <laughs> like I, I, I understand you're trying to do something different with Venom, but this is not what I was hoping for, to be honest with you. Um, I was hoping for something a little bit different and I knew he was going to go kind of cosmic and tie it into bigger Marvel stories, but this is not working for me on multiple, multiple levels. Um, but I did like the moment when Miles Morales waking up and kind of being the savior and then he like blasts through the, you know, the, they're surrounded by blackness. He knocks down Null, blasts his face off and then runs over to the wall, tries to rip it open and he sees that they are inside the dragon in space flying, I think, towards Clintar because obviously Clintar is the cage and if this creature gets back to Clintar, he can unlock the cage and rebond with his true self. Um, so there was a lot of interesting things, like I said, oh, they're, they're, they're referencing Grendel, and they're saying that he was tied, you know, he was called Grendel, or a piece of him that was exiled to Earth after he was dipped into the cage in the darkness. Um, the Clintars banished him to Earth somehow, and, uh, and he was left here, and he's in this dragon form, and he was kind of known as the Grendel on Earth, uh, and then Thor came and laid a smack down to him. So, okay, maybe Thor you know something that'll show up in this Venom comic and is an arch enemy of this creature I don't know I mean we'll see where this goes from here but I just 
I wasn't sure what I was reading when I was picking up this issue. And in a in one way, that's a good thing because I'm like, hey, I wasn't expecting any of this. And to be surprised, uh, especially as a longtime Venom fan, to see something that surprised me, I'll give credit, I guess, to Donny Cates. But I wouldn't say it was a good surprise. And it still needs time to sit with me because I'll be honest with you. Like when I was reading this, that's all I could think about was Ridley Scott and Rob Zombie just ruining two franchises and I was like that's what this feels like this feels like some guy who's like who's just is putting these ideas in front of what works most for this character but that's just my opinion so you guys let me know what you think in the comments below have you read this issue what do you think and I mean the thing about this is the pacing too it's like the first issue was on a roll it was going somewhere and I was like this is neat and then in the second issue it was like it pumped the brakes and it really was pulling back. And then the third issue was like, oh, it's a Miles Morales story and they're fighting. And then we got this cool interaction between them. And then the big God creature shows up and you're like, okay, here's the, the major threat. We learned what it is fully now. Um, and then this issue, it's like, you know, people go, oh, it'll probably make better sense when it's in trade because a lot of writers write for trade paperback now. And I'm going to be honest with you. like. So the last time, the second time I read through this, I went and read one, two, three, and four. So I, I was going through those on my, you know, uh, Kindle here, and then went right into four. And reading them all sequentially it seems even more chaotic. Uh, so, so if this was a trade, it would be like, like the pacing is just really weird, um, and it, it's I can't wrap my head around it. I feel like some of this information could have been peppered out. We literally got a whole comic book of two people talking uh, with a few interesting visuals, like a celestial getting his head cut off and then like a giant dragon flying through space with Eddie Brock and Miles in it. But again, those are the concepts of those just seem like the way Donny Cates thought on Thanos and that worked in the realm of Thanos. And he's trying to make it work here by telling this big epic, you know, Venom story, but it, you know, and tying it to the bigger Marvel picture. But to me, I'm like, but, I guess why? I mean, not that I'm against Eddie being a part of it. It's different. It's certainly something we've never seen before. It's Eddie being a, a, a major player in some big cosmic, you know, Marvel event or whatever that they might be planning for. But, you know, at the same time, I just want Eddie Brock to be Eddie Brock and I want the suit to do its thing and I want interesting stories and I want a rogues gallery built for him. And, uh, you know, this seems really big for him. And, and that's a positive because it's a direction I never would have thought of to go in. So that's the only reason I'm going to hang in there and see where it goes. I have to see how this first arc ends um, before I fully can make like a real judgment. But I just wanted to make this video to give you my initial reaction of just the craziness that is in this book and the fact that everything we knew apparently is false. And when writers do that, I immediately discredit them as being creative because to me I, what it seems like to me is they're like you know here's all the continuity and then I'm just gonna ignore it because there's so much of it or there's too much of it or some of them contradict each other so I'm not gonna war weave a, a web in between them and tie them all together I'm just gonna say it's false and take the shortcut route and write it my own way and I don't like when writers do that I like when writers come in and try to weave in the existing continuity I think those that shows creativity and that shows talent and this shows someone who likes to cut corners and I don't like that I think that's lazy and I think a lot of comic book writers do that nowadays where they get to write a character and they don't bother doing the research to actually try to weave in a story that fits into stuff that already happened. Um, I think Jeff John said it really well, is when he writes a book, he looks at everything that happened to that character, like he writes out their timeline, and he just pretends like it all really happened to them. So he's like, all right, so what, what would, where would Hal Jordan be mentally after going through this, 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 the core being taken down, him being Parallax, him dying, him being the Spectre, and then him coming back? Where does Hal go from here? And that is why that run for Green Lantern was so great. And they took a character that was like a D-list character and made his sales up to A-list status. For me, this is not what this is. Like, this is someone coming in and going, this is Rob Zombie coming into Halloween going, you know what? I think Michael Myers was beat by his dad and was treated bad and had a crazy family. And that's why he kills people. And it's like, what? Or it's like Ridley Scott coming in going, you know what? I think it'd be cool if some engineers made this thing and then that goo got into this and then a cyborg grabbed that goo and made this and then went to another planet as a severed head to do this and then boom xenomorphs and it's like 
what? <laughs> like, like, can't Xenomorphs just be a thing out there? Um, can't Michael Myers just be a crazy person? I think Patton Oswalt said it best too when he was talking about the Star Wars prequels and George Lucas. He made this joke once about how George Lucas comes up to him and says, hey, little guy, you know, do you like Darth Vader? And, you know, he's like, well, in this movie, you get to see him as a little kid. And he's like sad that his mom's gone and all this stuff. And Patton Oswalt's like, so what? And he's like, well, do you like Boba Fett? Because Boba Fett is in this movie, but he's like a little kid and his dad dies and he gets sad and stuff. And he's like, here, you want some ice cream? He's like, well, here's cream and sugar and milk. And you, these are all the ingredients you need to make, you know, <laughs> to make ice cream. And Patton Oswalt's like, dude, I just love the stuff I love. I don't care where they come from because I've already bought into the reality of what was established and that was enough for me to get into this universe so when you answer every little question you take away the mystique and the magic of movies and storytelling and so that happens a lot and so i understand comics are different it's a different medium there's plenty of room to go back and add stuff and i completely agree a hundred percent but in my opinion donny cates is taking that kind of approach he's taking star wars prequel approach he's taking ridley scott you know uh post prometheus uh, you know, approach, uh, or Prometheus and uh, whatever the second one was called. I didn't even see the second one because I was like, I could already guess it from the trailer. I was like, let me guess. David's still alive and he creates the xenomorphs. Uh, from the first trailer, I could guess it. And I was like, it seems bad. And then Rob Zombie's approach to, you know, the Halloween films. It just seems like the wrong approach uh, for a character like Venom. And I, although I all, I'm all for him fighting like some space dragon, that could have been a cool story. But all the little details with Null and this you know, backstory that he's some cosmic being and that he's tied to the Clintars and he created them and he forged the first one out of fire and made it into a sword to kill, you know, celestials. It's just like, oh my God, dude, like we don't need any of this. And, uh, and I honestly look forward to the day, like right now, I'm still on the fence. I'm going to wait till I read the final issue of the first arc before I make up a little bit more of my mind. But as of right now, there's a part of me that's like going forward like five years from now and reading, you know, I'm, I'm just imagining that I'm reading a Venom story five years from now and that writer is retconning all of this work that Donny Cates is putting in to tell a completely unnecessary Venom story, in my opinion. And you guys know I don't like to be negative on this channel. I'm, I'm trying to like be upbeat about this, but I really just cannot... I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this approach for a story, and I will give Donny Kate some credit. I didn't expect it, and on that level, he earns points because I certainly didn't see a lot of this coming, uh, but I think the reason I didn't see a lot of it coming is because it just makes no sense to go in this direction. But then again, you know, I have put my foot in my mouth before, so we'll see if that happens. But for right now, I am just I just don't know like why we're getting this story right now. Um, and I know a lot of people out there are probably digging it and I'm probably in the minority here. Uh, and that's fine if you have a different opinion, I wanna hear it. Let me know down below what you liked about this issue, what you didn't like about this issue. Whatever it is, we can totally have a civil conversation about it. Um, I just, you know, I'm having trouble here. Like you know, the first issue and third issue, I was like, okay, I'm kind of feeling this. But the, the even numbers, two and four, they keep like they keep making me worried and uh, especially this one that i paid you know four dollars uh, essentially for two people talking and me just being told by some new character that was created by this new writer that everything i've read for the most part is a lie and on that level i'm kind of like uh, I, I don't I'm not feeling this uh, you're not you're you're not making me want to continue to spend my money and i don't have a lot of it so you know i'm you know I've, I've not read Venom books before because of uh, writers going down this path. And so, you know, it's, it probably will happen again. I'm going to guess if Donny Cates uh, can, continues to take shortcuts as opposed to taking the creative path where you can wet, you know, weave in a new story in with back continuity uh, and old stories. But uh, this one, you know, the fact that he's just like, you know, clearing off the whole kitchen table and he's like screw it we're gonna start over and we're, we're ordering a pizza uh because we want to make dinner i want to make you know i want to make you a meal that's what we were promised i'm gonna cook you dinner you're gonna get a home cooked meal this is venom it's gonna go in a new direction it's gonna be crazy and it's like and then it feels like oh cool so it's all the plates we use and it's all of our silverware and it's all of our history at this table and then he just comes in and knocks it all off and goes all right guys we're ordering a pizza and we're eating on paper plates and that's kind of the <laughs> analogy i have here for what i feel after reading this issue. But again, if you feel different, let me know in those comments below. Thanks so much for watching my channel. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.